very short, okay, in my presentation because we are we are tired. But uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say that I agree with Francisco that we are living a different time in Latin, at least in South America. But I guess that we can talk about Latin America because even in Mexico, even in Central America, they are not stabilized and the people are not uh, satisfied, but they are seeing what is going on in, in South America. And uh, two things for me are very important. The first one was the Mercosur. You know, I, I think that there are a very, a very, <coughs> a, bon, a very small comprehension of the meaning, the real meaning of Mercosur. Without Mercosur, we would be submitted to Alca in the United States. And it was because we have a plan, we have a project, a common project in, in South America, that we could say no to the United States. You remember Bush father, you remember uh, uh, the, the jazz uh, player, you know, uh, that went to Chile to, to do some agreements with Alka, and it was uh, no one accepted. And why? Because we had a better plan. I think that since, since uh, liking or not Charles, we can say that there are many things in the attitude of Charles that I don't agree. Uh, but what he's doing, I agree in, in Venezuela. I visit Venezuela. And I talk with the people in Venezuela, and you know about health, about education, many projects he's doing. The help that Chavez has done to, to Argentina to say no to the to the IMF in a very crucial moment of the Argentina. So I think that we are the region, at least the South region, is is in a good path. And I, I think that we have to, to prosper, we have to continue. Uh, you know, all Bolsa Familia now is, uh, is a project that is spread all over. Uh, Madame Kishin just ran the election and won the election because of Bolsa Familia that she uh, reproduced in Argentina. And those things are very important because for that reason I think that they interrupt the construction that sells Furtado. Uh, told us uh, with his book, I think that we are recuperating time. We just began another another thing. I think that we are in another paradigm, living in a, in a new moment. Okay? Uh, so I will go very fast, please. Uh, I, I, I put the name. Francisco just asked me to talk about higher education. I'm not specialized in this. Uh, but as a, uh, I, I now I'm, I'm president of Unbox and I have obligation to, to, to know something. And I, I try to, to prepare some ideas of what the government, of Lula government, and with Dilma, uh, they are doing in higher education. It's a lot of things. We have still, I, 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 I think that I will show that we still have many problems, but we are doing different, and we are doing in a better way, okay? Let's proceed. So, the first one I, I, I put, uh, oh, the first one I put in, in Portuguese, no matter, uh, a system of, uh, 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 a neoliberal system of higher, uh, Education. education, okay? And we had two moments, almost in 68, when our uh, university system, we copy, the word is this, we copy the way the Americans, uh, they do university. And it was at Fernando Henrique Cardoso uh, in a 94, uh, also uh, keep maintaining uh, the idea of uh, to privatize the, the, the federal university. I don't know if you remember Paulo Renato, his Minister of Education. It 
was a, as Fernando Henrique Cardoso was a, 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 a scholar, and they, uh, they, they, they were disasters for Brazilian University at that time. So I, I will put uh, the, some dilemmas of our uh, superior uh, education. Uh, the regional disparity that appears again in the, the, the higher uh, education and the positive policy of law. Very, very quickly, please. Uh, the first one. Next one. Next. Yes. Okay. In the 90s, uh, the ne neoliberal tendency, the reform of higher education in Brazil occurred in parallel with the reform of the state. Washington consensus was established, and the, there are many, many documents, serious documents of the world then, that proclaim that we had, we, we should have, we should privatize the, the superior education in Brazil. Okay? So they, are, they were doing like uh, free market. Okay? That is, during the two terms of Fernando Henrique Cardoso, was a strong process of commodification of social relations and university was included in this. Please, I, I'd say uh, I'm very uh, passing very quick on this, but uh, okay, what is the uh, one of the higher, uh, the, the strongest dilemma we have in Brazil today in the problem of education? First of all, we cannot understand a system of education looking uh, only for the superior education, the higher education. We have to understand that the education as a whole, as a totality, as an integrity system. In the university, the, the university in Brazil, we have to, to face that we abandon the primary sector and the secondary sector. And the militaries, they start to do this because in the time of the miracle, economic miracle of Brazil, of the uh, whole dictator period, we, we have the, at least Geisel, you remember, say, we got to, to build a, a potence of Brazil, uh, and it was the time of, uh, where we create our post-graduation. We start to create thousands and thousands of Brazilians were sent to the United States, to Europe, to France, to Britain. And, okay, it was a very strong cost for the country, but at least we have now, with all the problems we create, we have now a strong uh, higher education system in Brazil. Okay? All we have, in all, all areas, we have uh, masters, doctorals, postdoctorals, very organized system. Okay? Uh, but it was a very strong cost for the, for the country. And abandoning the, the, the primary, the investments in the primary and secondary school. Another thing uh, is that the research we have in Brazil, research is done mainly almost, uh, almost 195% is done in the public sector public universities and not in private sector. Uh, the national education plan that was launched by 2001 sets a target for 2010, an enrollment of 30% of the population between 18 and 24 in, at the university. We, we didn't reach that goal. We are very far from it. But at least the government, Lula and Dilma, uh, they have done something important that will make difference. I, I'm quite sure that it, it will make difference in the future. <coughs> the first, the first line, the first paragraph. Uh, I include this paragraph because uh, in having all this uh, lowering uh, of the, the poorness in Brazil. The, the, the people that come from the bottom of society, they start to, 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 to go to the primary school, even with low quality. They start to get into the secondary course, 
and they are knocking at the door of the university. What we, we do about you know, For the first time in history, uh, uh, a large amount of population uh, concludes secondary school and are trying to get into university. Okay, please. Next one. Private sector dominance. We still have. It's not a problem of Fernando Cardoso or Lula. The, the system was established. I, I have some numbers showing that we put upside down it in by, by the beginning after the Second World War, our superior education system was more public than private. And after we, we changed this. Uh, so, the majority of the number of vacancies in higher education institutions occur mainly in the private sector, whose costs are out of reach for most families of young people between 18 and 24 years. Please, next. Regional disparity in higher education in Rome. The national average of 17% in Rome in the EAS, superior education, over the total population, uh, there is an additional problem. Large regional disparity. See, with the Southeast, respectively, having a jerk of 20.8% and the Northeast region only 9% of the enrollment in the superior education of the country. This is a very strong imbalance and the government has to face it to change this condition. Some things are changing, but the, the, the rhythm is still very, very low. Uh, please. So, the regional, uh, regional distribution of enrollment in higher education, face-to-face -face education, the number Today we have uh, 6 million and almost 500 here is face-to-face -face education. Uh, <coughs> numbers and percentage of people enrolled in the, in the higher education. You see the difference between the Southeast, the Northeast, remembering that this, the Northeast is the, the second region demographic uh, in importance in Brazil. Okay. Okay. Another one. Only 11 percent of Brazilians between 25 and 64 years old have a university degree. This is still a very low uh, <coughs> position. Among the OECD countries, the average is 28, more than double that of Brazil. Chile has 24. In Russia, 54%. Please. Uh, public access, access uh, policies. In relation to expanding access to higher education, we must observe an intense debate around uh, two government policies aimed at its purpose. Uh, Lula created the Fund for uh, Student Financing of Higher Education. The young people, the young students, they can uh, knock at the government box and ask for, uh, but uh, to go to private universities and not to, to, to and the, the government has a special loan for, for these people, but for them that come for the, for the low classes, it's, it's difficult to pay, uh, and so uh, the fund function, but not as, as we would like to. And the ProUni, the, the University for All, that also uh, gave possibility for many people from the lower class to get into the university. Uh, Lula established quota of racial, quota, ethnic uh, uh, scholarships, and uh, for Indians, for Negroes, and uh, okay, please. This is the enrollment of, of higher education until 2004. And uh, on the, in 2004, nearly 3 million from the private sector, precisely 71%. And these, these, uh, these quotas of ProUni and uh, the fund for, for higher education, the people don't 
don't go into the, the, the public school because we have a baccalaureate very strong to pass into. It's a very, it's very strong to. In medicine, even uh, sons of middle class, they stay two, three years for getting into the University of Medicine, which is quite, quite difficult. Uh, <clears throat> ProUni serves only a small segment of potential beneficiary, uh, which is also observed at much larger number of applicants of the program. The ProUni gives half a, a scholarship for uh, uh, poor students to but even if they only have to pay 50, they don't have condition uh, to go to a, 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 you know, a city in a capital to, to pay, to rent an apartment and so on. It's for that reason, the, the, the people that get into university by ProUni, they are not so, so large in number. Okay, another one? Is a... Uh, some, some, some figures, some data, see that the, the, universe, the public universities uh, in 1933, the numbers of enrollment was very, very little, okay? And you see the progress. Uh, and today, the number of the last uh, census of higher education I, I, I found, uh, the total number of, of registration has been 6 million uh, and 300,000 or 74 uh, percent on the private sector university. So the private sector university increased because of this possibility gave by Lula to quarters and, and private sector. Okay? This was, in my, my opinion, the Lula government should have discussed more with the, the public university. Uh, and he decided to have results very quickly in the first part of his government. He, he put money in the private sector. And after, he tried to come back and to, to reinforce the, the public sector. Okay? Please. Now I, I start to present some, some results of, of the, the, the benefits that the ruler government has done in the higher education system. The percentage of full-time teachers are increasing and represent today 18.2% in 2010. If you look uh, all over Europe, now, there is a very consolidated uh, university higher education system, but the contracts here are very fragile in Europe. Okay? You will not contract, when you get into a university, you don't have a contract for life. You can be any moment to put outside the university. And in Brazil, no. If you get into by the, the examination, with you do a, a you are selected by a board and you get a, a job for life, okay? And you, not only for life, but you have a full-time exercise of the profession, which is much better than, okay? The part-time, in turn, uh, goes from 18.5 80, in 2002 to 12. It's reducing the time of, of part-time professors in the, universe, in the public universities, not in, in private. And residually, hourly, uh, the teachers' rates are only, you know, the university used to contract people to give classes. It happens here in Europe a lot, but in Brazil, this is almost disappearing, this figure, okay? A professor that is invited only to give a course, uh, okay, please? Okay. Growth of enrollment from 2002 to 2009. Between 2002 and 2009, Brazil doubled the number of graduates in higher education. Double. These numbers rose from 467,000 in 2001 to 959 in 2009. 
private sector or public sector, okay? That data from the census of higher education shows that enrollment in higher education in Brazil increased from 3.5 million 2002 to 5.9 million. This is the general census, private and public. Okay. Well, you can you can pass. Brazil, in achieved in 2006 the fifth, uh, 15th position in the ranking of countries with greater production of new scientific knowledge of the world, climbing to places compared to 2005. Uh, the international data, Carpish uh, Thompson, shows that the Brazilian research published 16,800 uh, articles that year in the most important scientific journals, only about four times less than Germany, the second ranking, which publishes 8% of total world. In relation to, okay, this is only to show that in the production of the university, paper production, scientific uh, papers published in, in experience uh, journals, uh, <clears throat> at the top rankings there are the United States, which account for 22% of the scientific world in terms of paper producer. Then comes Germany, which shifts to Japan and took the second position. China is coming very fast, okay? But Brazil is already having a, a good position because of these changes uh, after Lula government, please. I put as a challenge for semi-peripheral countries or peripheral countries the new global context requires a total reinvention of the national regional project, without which no reinvention of the university will be possible. What means? Uh, Francisco talked about uh, Latin America, the change of South America, and so on. Uh, I, 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 I participate as a member indicated by the Minister of Education uh, to build the University uh, of Latin America in, for Latin American integration in the triple, triple frontier of Argentina, Paraguay, it was a, a, an idea of Lula, a very interesting idea to, to forge a university with half of the students from Brazil and the other half with uh, students from all over Latin America with a scholarship given by the Brazilian government. And all the curriculum of this university obliged that each uh, of the students has to know a bit more about politics, economics, culture of Latin America. Okay? And the teachers also, half are Brazilians and half are non-Brazilian Latin America uh, origin. So these uh, meant that without the integration, we Brazilians, we Argentinians, we Peruvians, we all the time we start to only to look for United States is a mimetic comprehension of what is science, and to look for Europe, to look, and without looking inside of the country, what are our possibilities, what are our priorities in terms of the, the science that produce, science is universal, but science is not universal in terms of it is applicate. And if you applicate science in Brazil or in Bolivia, this science has to be uh, different of the way uh, of producing science in Europe or the United States. It's very, this is very important. Uh, to, to comprehend, okay? So our university has to change because if you look for the, the, the studies in economic, in sociology, in political science, we are reproducing in our universities uh, 
the economics that the, 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 the first world produced, we are doing only mathematics in economics. And we are s trying to solve the problems of uh, economical problems of Brazil, Bolivia, by only by using math. And I think that it's an error. It's, an, uh, it's, a, it's a completely different vision of what we need, I think. I, I don't have time to express better what I'm thinking, but uh, it's only to, to okay, to... Lula, so, I, I put this, this seven points that I think that uh, summarize what Lula has done in the, uh, for the uh, higher education to the rescue of higher education system in Brazil. Okay? We still, I, I have to show and I have to, to stress this, we still have a lot of problems, but we are in a pace, uh, a different pace and a good pace, I, I believe. Among the measures, the, the measures uh, <coughs> to attack at least the public universities, the creation of 14 new federal universities all over the country, and mainly universities create in the rural areas, in the hinterland of Brazil. And this is very important for the middle class staying in those cities cities with 500 people, that all the, the middle class of those cities has to go to the capital 500 kilometers, 800 kilometers, and these cities will, will be abandoned by their possibility of creation, innovation, and so on. So, to maintain, to create new universities in the hinterland is very important for the future of this, this location. International, internalization of public university. What I mean by that? My university, UFPR, and uh, UF, the, uh, univers uh, the Piauí. University of Piauí Federal University, they start to open campus all over the state. When we discuss uh, a concept of uh, 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 Sistema Regional de Inovação, National System of Innovation, or Region System of Innovation, which is a concept uh, established here in, in, in Spru, in Sussex, from Christopher Freeman. These, uh, we look at utilizing this concept uh, in Brazil, the only state of the federation that has a regional system or a state system of innovation is Sao Paulo, because Sao Paulo has university all spread all over the, the, the state, doing innovation and capacitating people and so on. In Brazil now, we, we are starting all over the federation because of this internationalization. So, improvement of the university's infrastructure. We are going, receiving laboratories, better conditions of uh, hiring for life new and full-time teachers. This is amazingly important because in the eight years of Fernando Ricardo being so blasé as he is <laughs> and saying that we have to receive more students without, without contract, new professors. It was really, really tough. Uh, for, for, for us at the university this time. Releasing funds for research through agencies. Now, almost every state of the federation has a, uh, a foundation that receives money from the federal government, from St. Pekir, from but also from the states itself at the state level, which give strength to, to, to research. Establishment of quotas for poor students. At the beginning, you know, some, some uh, aristocratic uh, figures of professors say, are we going to put the down, the, the level of the, the, 
the university very, very low, but it's not true. Because when these people that come from lower class, they, they, they want to, to move in society. And so they are very, they fight for, they are eager for a better position in society. Increasing the number of scholarship for graduate, master, and PhD. And I put, not to be so, so but optimistic, to have some certain uh, such action do not mean to change the configuration of a, a stratified higher education system okay? that has taken over the past 20 years and the strengths of the hegemony of the private market sector. Okay? To finish, the Luba government has established several measures to increase access of the poorest to the public university. And not only uh, in, inside Brazil, I don't know if you, if you know about, but uh, the government, since already uh, 10 years, gives scholarship for, for people from uh, Africa, the, the, the Portuguese-speaking uh, students from Africa. Every year, uh, all the public University of Brazil receive more than 500 uh, students from Africa to do master and doctoral in Brazil, paid by the Brazilian government. It's a very, uh, it's a very uh, solidarity. The system of social and racial quotas, for example, was adopted by 20 federal universities in 14 states. The creation in 2009, the unified system selection, which selects a student for jobs in federal university by the note, because if you don't know the system, the middle class in Brazil, they put their sons in private school. I have done this with my, because the private uh, uh, schools in the secondary level are highly better than the, the, the secondary uh, public sector. But now, the students that are serious in the, the study, and if they have good notes, they are allowed to get into the university by the note, not uh, with the exigence of the Bertaolia, because the Bertaolia is, uh, is a funnel that, uh, okay? <coughs> right, just to finish. No, this is a, it's a word of Bourdieu, a very interesting idea of Bourdieu, what is the, the, the needed new university. Thank you very much for the... I think that we are a bit tired today, Saturday, but we are here. <laughs>